Greetings, Earthlings. Today we're going to take a look at the Nova 445 demos for VCF West 2021. I will schedule this video to go live once the show closes so that uh, anyone who goes to the show will be seeing this stuff for the first time, pretty much. Although some of the demos and stuff are things that I've covered in previous videos. But this setup is what I'm going to have, and uh, so we'll go, we'll go through it here. Starts with a blue anti-static pad right there. Um, and then from left to right, we have the uh, power supply, which is an HP 6281A. Uh, there's a meter on the power supply, an analog meter, and that is set to measure current. And then the HP 3476A uh, is measuring the output voltage. The output voltage is fixed to a constant level with a resistor on the back panel so that the voltage controls on the, uh, on the power supply don't have any effect. Uh, the current limiting does have effect and it's set to about 3 amps right now. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's drawing just under 2 amps, so 3 amps should be fine. Okay, moving to the right. Uh, well, we'll we'll take next the uh, this poster board here. Um, that's a, a vintage advertisement. Uh, I forget what magazine it was from. Uh, I found a digital copy online and printed it out for the F Fairchild F ninety four forty five processor chip. Okay, so that's uh, pretty cool. In, in fact, it shows prices and, and things like that on there. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the most important part of the demo, of course, is the uh, computer itself, which still doesn't have a case. So it's uh, kind of in the raw there. There are three boards. The middle board, the green one, is the processor board. On the bottom... Well, so the processor board has processor and memory. Uh, on the bottom is the video card, which also has sound and um, serial I.O. And on the top, the blue board there, is a paper tape reader emulator and a real-time clock. And then this little vertical card is a stand-in for a uh, front panel. Uh, so it's a minimal front panel, which just has uh, reset and start switch and four LEDs, which are power, run, interrupt, enable, and carry. Okay, moving on over here, we have a nice stack of <laughs> vintage audio <laughs> gear. Um, I have two speakers. It's It, it, it outputs mono, but uh, I have two speakers just because why not? Uh, those are Nakamichi speakers from some uh, mini uh, stereo system. That's probably about 1990 vintage, so not, not real super vintage. The amplifier on top is a Radio Shack SA-10, and this is one of the early versions which uh, uses transistors, not integrated circuits, so that's kind of fun. Continuing on here, we have the uh, graphics display, which is a Sony... What? SSM 930 monitor. That sits on a vintage milk crate from 1974. Stolen from West Lynn Creamery. I think they're out of business or absorbed or something, so I don't think I'm going to get in too much trouble for having that. And uh, then the uh, console terminal is a Texas Instruments uh, Silent 700 Model 703. Uh, I have additional documentation that goes with it. Uh, here's a little brochure for the processor. Um, I have I have code listings. Uh, this is the monitor firmware. You can see it's the monitor firmware. This is oh well. This is one of the this is one of the games, uh, one of the demos, <laughs> and we'll get to that. And I'll probably pull that back down. Okay. Um, 
And uh, this is the assembler that I've written for it in Perl. So if anybody wants to look at that. There's additional documentation, just data general documentation. Oops. This book, which we used to call How to Abuse the Nova Computers. Um, and there's other stuff in here too. Macro assembler, user manual. Um, programmer's reference manual. It's falling apart. And those, those things date from mid to late 70s. Oops, it's falling apart. Okay. It is uh, started up and running right now. You can see um, that it displays something on the screen so that you know it's working. It also silences the, uh, mutes the audio. Uh, because when you first power it up, it makes a buzzing noise, uh, so you know it's working, I guess. So in that uh, in that ROM monitor code, one of the first things it does is mute the audio. Oh, I also have documentation. I have the uh, the schematics for all of the boards, if anybody wants to look at those. And I have some blank boards, if anybody wants to see those. Um, that's just two of them. There's another one. <laughs> So, I'll throw up the block diagram on the screen. Um, the disk emulator is not done. It's only semi-started at this point. So, instead of a disk emulator, we have a paper tape reader emulator uh, to stand in for this year's show. I'll probably, I hope to have, I'll say, I hope to have the disk emulator working next year. Uh, and be able to demonstrate that. Um, so there's ROM monitor code, which the 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 9445 has a uh, 64K mode, which is uh, non non standard Nova stuff. So you start it up, it starts up in um, you know 100% compatible Nova mode, and then you can enable an upper 32K words, or 64K bytes, of memory. And uh, uh, it changes the behavior slightly, so again, it's not Nova compatible. So that's where that high memory is. Well, there's monitor code that starts mapped into the low memory space. And then, you know, again, one of the first things it does right, even before muting the audio, is it enables that 64K mode, and which then maps itself up to the high memory so that the low memory is just 32K words of RAM. And all the monitor code and the shared memory, the, the video memory, uh, is, in high, is in high memory. So it can run in fully compatible, you know, Nova mode. It should be able to run straight, normal Nova programs because all it has to do is load a program in, switch back to 32K mode, and then start that program running. But for these demos, most of these demos are actually running in 64K mode because we're using the graphics, and you, you need to enable 64K mode to use the graphics. So these are all programs of my creation, I guess you would say. I'll talk in more detail. We can look at what the five demos I have are, okay? And that starts with Echo, which is just a simple program to echo uh, terminal input. Um, to, to, to do that, we, we, we flip the page over. So we're, we're running in the monitor, and, uh, and we can enter that code. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven instructions. And, um, and it can, it's, it's location independent, so it can go anywhere in memory. And then the, uh, 
the computer will echo all input just right back to the terminal. So you can see how that works. Um, so that's demonstrating uh, the ROM monitor as you know input in lieu of a uh, switches you know switches and blinking lights front panel. Again, back over here. Um, there's a board that's standing in for the front panel. This could have a full standard front panel, which would have been what most systems of the day had. Uh, although Data General did make turnkey systems as well, which didn't have a front panel. So that may be a future thing as well. But for now, uh, you use the uh, you use the monitor program to enter and examine. Uh, memory. Test number two, or, or demo number two, I call trap, and that is uh, I've written a simple hello world program. Uh, however, it has a bug in it, uh, intentional bug in it, uh, and that's to demonstrate a feature that I built into the monitor code, and that is uh, trap handling. There's a trap instruction, and so what I'm using that for is essentially uh, as a breakpoint, which sends you into the monitor, which lets you then examine the registers and memory locations, make modifications, and then proceed from there, or give up and go back and rewrite the code or whatever. <laughs> so, oh, and also also uh, in the monitor code, there's a disassembler. So the trap demo uh, demonstrates the disassembler as well. I'll have that as part of the, as part of the demo. Okay. Uh, it also demonstrates, of course, terminal input output. And uh, this is the first one that demonstrates the use of the paper tape reader emulator because the program, this program, is stored on one of the EEPROMs on that board. So the way the paper tape reader emulator works is instead of paper tape, it has EEPROMs, which have exactly the same data on them as the paper tape would have. To load a paper tape, a virtual paper tape, shall we say. You select it with one of these switches, and then you press the blue button, and that would be simulating taking the paper tape out of its tray or whatever, loading it into the reader, and maybe closing the gate uh, on the reader, you know. And then the monitor has a command to read the paper tape. That is using exactly the same instructions as if that were a real paper tape reader. So in theory, if I had a paper tape reader, if I could find one, and a paper tape punch, because <laughs> the reader's not much good without a punch, uh, I could replace my emulator with an actual paper tape reader, and I wouldn't have to change any of the code, any of the monitor code. Okay, continuing. The next demo is the life demo, which I had last year, I showed, um, but I only had one starting pattern. And I think I did a video on this already, but um, so this is Conway's Game of Life. So this is demonstrating uh, Terminal I.O. It's also demonstrating the bitmap graphics, and it's a computation intensive program. And of course, the paper tape reader emulator, because that's how it gets loaded in. Uh, last year's had just a single starting pattern. This one has a choice of four, so it prompts you when you start it up. The next one, next uh, demo program, this is the biggie, is Star Trek. So what I did here, this is the classic Star Trek game. Uh, and I, I started with... There was a basic version, um, which was called Super Star Trek. You can find it out there on the web. Um, and I rewrote that or converted that to assembly language. 
Data General Nova assembly language. And then I also added graphics capabilities. So the original one is strictly an interactive terminal-based program. This one retains all of the original terminal-based uh, properties, but also has a status screen, um, which keeps you from having to enter certain commands, although they're still there, you can still enter them. And demo number one, two, three, four, five, demo number five is a clock program. So this is demonstrating graphics, again, because it displays the clock on the screen. Sound, because it chimes. Now what this is, is it's a ship's clock. And a ship's clock chimes every half hour from one to eight bells. So a, a watch was four hours, or eight bells. So eight bells represents 12 o'clock, four o'clock, and eight o'clock. Uh, one bell would be 12.30, 4.30, or 8.30, and so on. So your watch started at eight bells, and it ended at the next eight bells. And so this is emulating that uh, using the sound output, displaying the clock on the, on the CRT, uh, and the clock has a bit of a Star Trek theme to it. It's not your standard... Uh, sort of analog clock. Also, this is demonstrating interrupt handling. So this is the first program of all of them here that actually makes use of interrupts. Uh, the, the terminal interrupts are not implemented yet. That'll be on uh, another board. The, actually, on the, you know, on, the, on the disk emulator board, we'll also have interrupt handling. So right now, the only thing that can generate an interrupt is that real-time clock. And so I'm making use of that so this is showing that, yes, it's capable of handling interrupts. And, uh, of course, the paper tape reader emulator. Okay. So that's the overview. Let's run through these demos. I'll rearrange the cameras, and we'll, we'll quickly run through the demos so that you can see what they look like.